Hi, welcome back to another video. Jack-o'-lanterns are a Halloween tradition, but the problem is the pumpkins start to spoil and stink and you have to do a new one every year. So today, my family and I are going to make some foam pumpkins that you can use year after year and they'll never rot or stink. So let's get going. We're using these foam pumpkins that we bought at a store uh, in the after Halloween sale last year. And to cut them, we're going to be using this hot knife and also a normal X-Acto knife. And the first thing that we did was sketch out our ideas on paper so we could work that out before touching the pumpkins. Next, we drew our designs onto the pumpkins using a pencil. We don't have to worry about the lines that we're making here because ultimately we're going to end up painting over everything. And then we cut out the shapes. Now you don't have to have a hot knife. As you can see, I'm using an X-Acto knife here. The secret to using an X-Acto knife is to go slow and don't try to cut through all with one cut. Take several cuts, going over it, and eventually you'll get through. This foam is only about a quarter of an inch thick. Eventually you'll get to the point where it's really easy to just stab the knife down and kind of saw till the very end. And then you can just pop out the pieces. And then you can just clean up the inner edge with an X-Acto knife very easily. And if you've got a hot knife, which is basically an X-Acto knife on a soldering iron that just gets hot, you can just slowly stab it in and just gradually cut down your lines. I don't know that this is any quicker than doing it directly with a, an X-Acto knife, but it does tend to give you a cleaner edge from the beginning. And the more we used it, the more we got used to the awkwardness of having to hold it so far back. And at this point, you have a traditional jack-o'-lantern, but we want to enhance ours a little bit. So we're going to use some foam clay to add dimension to the face. As always, I've got a list of all of the products and tools that I'm using down below. And if you use those affiliate links, it always helps the channel. And we just push this clay onto the pumpkin. It sticks really well. But if it doesn't, just dip your finger in water and rub your finger across the pumpkin and the clay will stick right to it. You can even use the foam just to change the texture of the pumpkin itself. In this case, uh, she just wanted a kind of lumpy, bumpy skin. I also like to add little warts and veins, things that you might see on a real pumpkin. I also made some teeth for my pumpkin out of foam. And when we're all done, we're just going to let this dry overnight. Now my wife wanted to do one that looked like Venom from Marvel. She needed some really sharp teeth, so she's using translucent polymer clay, rolling it into little noodles, and then rolling one side more than the other to make it into a sharp point. Then she pressed each tooth in from the back. This would give her a place to put glue later on. Now Venom also has a crazy tongue. So the way we made that is by using Super Sculpey, which is pink out of the box. And I took a thin wire and buried it inside a noodle of Super Sculpey. And then I just kind of flattened it out into shape. Um, and once we got it into shape, we needed to bend it into the kind of S shape that the tongue makes. And the wire makes this really easy to do. Then we cooked the polymer clay as directed. And now it's time to start the paint. We're going to start with a base coat of spray paint of either orange or black. And for mine, I decided that I wanted to try spray painting the inside black. So I did that through the mouth first. For the orange pumpkins, I'm using a color here called cinnamon. It's more of a burnt sienna, so it's, it's a dark orange. And you'll see it's very close to the base color that they started with. And after that dries, it's time to paint the details. For Venom, she's just doing a dry brush coat of a medium gray. So she's got the little texture that's on there from the foam. And most of the paint has been brushed off of her brush and she's just rubbing it across and it just leaves little specks behind wherever it's raised. Now if you're going to try some paint you're not quite sure how it's going to look you can always just try it on the bottom first since no one will ever see it there. 
Now, my daughter wants hers to look muddy, so she's using a lot of different washes of different browns, just layering it on until she has the color and the pattern that she likes. Also, she wants to, to feel like it's burnt on top, so she focuses around the stem with darker paint. And she ended up finishing by painting the whole stem and the area around it with a flat black so that it feels like burnt dust. For mine, I started off by painting any of the areas where I wanted to see like the, the flesh of the pumpkin. I used yellow ochre to go over those areas. And then similar to my daughter, I used washes of different browns to go over the face. And I tried to focus in areas where their dirt and grime would kind of stick around. And this included the dents all around the pumpkin. And again, I focused mainly on the top and the bottom of the pumpkin, uh, putting the most dirt in those areas. Then I dry brushed a bright yellow across the warts and bumps and everything to just pick up some highlights. Next thing I did was paint the teeth with kind of an ivory color and then painted the roots of the teeth with some yellow and some burnt umber. Now let's hop over to adding some accessories. Venom's tongue looks cool but we want it to look even grosser so we painted it with a wash of red paint and dabbed it off with paper towel. But once the paint dried, it still didn't look wet, so we decided to give it a permanent wet look, and we're going to use UV resin. The way we do this is we just squeeze a little bit of UV resin onto the surface and use a disposable brush to paint it around and coat the entire surface. Then we use a black light to cure the resin, and it gets hard and stays looking glossy. And you can do just a little bit at a time with this, it's totally fine. And once it's all cured, then we just use hot glue to glue it down inside the pumpkin. And lastly, using hot glue, she glued each of the teeth in. My daughter wanted the stem of her pumpkin to look like a burnt bomb fuse so we hot glued short strands of sisal rope onto it then to paint it we sprayed the sisal with some water and then just brushed paint over it and it kind of soaked in to the rope to make the tips look like there were still some burning embers she started by just dabbing on some white paint to the ends then she went over it with orange and yellow paints and having the white there first made those colors show up really clearly. For the teeth she took some clear artificial nails and painted the inside surface with some off-white and then cut those in half and we hot glued them in place. And the last little touch was that we took some of this creepy cloth and cut a small piece off and then glue it into the corners of the mouth kind of like spider webs. Now everybody's was looking so great and I wanted to add some accessories to mine so I reached into my bag and found the doll arms that I used to make wall hooks out of and I glued those onto the side of my jack-o'-lantern. Now we were basically done but I realized I didn't have any way to put the lights inside and so I took out my hot knife again and cut the top of the pumpkin the same way you would do a real jack-o'-lantern at an angle and this allowed me to drop the light inside and to keep the lid on I just used a straight pin and pushed it through the foam. I could have glued it but my lights have batteries and I may need to change those in the future. Now ideally I would have done this step before we painted anything but I didn't think about that. So now we're done. Let's take a look at the final result. I love the way that these all turned out. and We had a lot of fun doing it together as a family. 
If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up because that'll let YouTube know that other people might also like the video. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future videos. But until then, don't be bored, be creative.